they were going to cover testing um, surge capacitors and lightning arresters. In this case, this surge capacitor um, is rated to uh, 1.5 uh, microfarad, and uh, these are uh, these lightning arresters are rated for uh, 5.1 kV or 5,100 volts. This one here, uh, I'm looking at the nameplate on the side, uh, has a uh, has a shorting um, resistor in here to, to, in order to um, bleed it out, or bleeding resistor. So uh, what we're going to do, this is a 1989, and these are 1989 vintage, it's now 2010. So we're going to test and make sure these survive the failure of a machine. Um, these were in the connection box, which uh, we'll show you in a picture. And um, what we've done is remove these to make it easy to, to show you how these are tested. If, our test, if I'm testing them in the connection box, I will disconnect them from all supply and the motor in order to do the testing. So again, I'd be testing it just like this in any case. Uh, I'm going to put lead to ground, and uh, here lead to ground, uh, which I can do also uh, in the connection box. The tools I need to test the surge capacitor include a simple fluke meter, I can also use an all test 4 with a capacitance reading. So if I change this to my capacitance reading here, uh, I'm all set. So uh, this is set up to read uh, microfarads. Now, this is 1.5 microfarad. That would be all three of these together as one. So they're in parallel. So I should get about one half of a microfarad for each one of these, give or take a little bit. In other systems, especially 13.2 or 13.8 systems, I would, might actually have three separate capacitors. In that case, the nameplate rating, say 2.5 microfarad, would be exactly the reading I should get for each one of those. So what I want to do is I want to take my ground lead, my black lead, and I want to put my red lead uh, on the incoming side. Again, I should get about roughly right about there, 0.5 uh, microfarad. I can go to the next one. By the way, before I test, and I've already done this, you ground the capacitor, especially if it's in place, uh, for about uh, uh, five, ten minutes, and that way you bled off everything. Again, this is about the same. It's a little different, but uh, you know, after you know, 30 years, you expect it to be a little off. And this one's identical to the first one, 0.544. So this one's a little different, but not too bad. So now I've tested and I've verified that I have a good uh, capacitor here. Now what I can also do, uh, which is different, a little difficult with a uh, lead resistor in place, is I can also do a high potential test to make sure that the insulation resistance is good on these machines, um, as well as a mega to ground, insulation ground test. The insulation to ground, I'm again going to use the same instrument. What I'll do is set it to ohms and uh, simply take my lead to ground, and I'm expecting to get between 10 and 20 mega ohms. In this case, uh, 15. And because it's a capacitor, it's counting down. Okay, now it's climbing back up again, probably because I had it charged. That's acting like a capacitor should. And then last but not least, you'll notice that these are all in the mega ohm range. You should end at about 15 when it finishes climbing, and then it'll begin to, now if I swap the leads, it'll change direction. So, the next step I can do is something called a high potential test. Now, that will tell me um, at what point do I have leakage to ground and what the leakage to ground will be. Now, if I tie all three together, um, I should get a reading of about five, uh, of about five uh, thousand volts as well. 
And this instrument here is my high potential tester. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tie my leads. I'm going to put my power side on the leads. I'm just going to do one lead at a time. And then to ground. Basically, like this. So, when I start up my high potential tester, which I now have the ability to put uh, up to 15,000 volts, but I'm not going to go that high. I'm shooting for a value somewhere up here, and I'm going to watch my microamperes. That's my leakage, and it's going to come up and then settle down. In this case, I'm going to take this one for about 5,000 volts. Okay, this is going to come back down a little bit. And then I'm going to zero it out, and I'm going to watch this decline gradually. That tells me that my um, leakage, uh, my, my bleeding uh, resistors are working well. Turn off my voltage. Again, same test. Watch where my leakage is, zero it out, and watch it bleed down. Okay. And last but not least, the last one, turn my voltage up, put it there, wait till it settles, about the same, and bring it back down. Now this is the same tester I'm going to use with the um, lightning arresters. Now on a lightning arrestor, I can do the same test number of times. Now by the way, I'm still going to bleed those capacitors to ground for about 10 minutes, but I don't have enough time on YouTube to do that, so I won't do that on here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just connect this from here, and I'm going to connect one lead to the base, my lightning arrestor, and one lead to the top, and that will look like this. Okay. Now I'm just going to do the one for the case of this video. We've tested each of these already, but base, and then the power supply goes to the top. Now some of these are gap. Uh, resistors. Some of them have different materials in them. Some of them have oil. This one has oil. So let me focus in. Now what we're looking for is we know from the nameplate on this uh, lightning arrestor that it's 5.1 kV. So we're going to increase the voltage and I should not see any increase in leakage until I hit about 5,000 volts or 5,100 volts. Once I do, my leakage should jump up and I should not be able to increase the voltage any higher. Now, I'm going to be about that value, and I believe these ones here we had to get close to 7,000 volts. Um, that is roughly acceptable because the leakage starts at the lower voltage. Again, these are 1989 vintage. So I turn on my power, turn on this, and I in begin increasing. I'm at 2,500 volts now. Okay, no movement, you'll notice no movement of the, uh, the microammeter. I'm at 5,000 volts. It's just coming up off. Okay, it is now coming away. And when I hit a certain point, that's about 7,000 volts. Notice it comes up. And then at one point now, I can turn this all the way up, and I'm not going to be able to increase the voltage. In this case, about 7,000 volts. And I bring it back down, and uh, that tests relatively good. It's a little on the high side, 
um, so we may recommend that these are replaced uh, because uh, uh, because they're 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 reading at about 7,000 instead of 5,100 volts. Um, but the bigger danger is if these actually go to ground or short. So uh, in place, if I notice that these are actually in the other end of the condition and they're shorting, meaning that the the uh, that they peak up in current well below 5,100 volts then we would recommend replacement because if they do short to ground, you'll have full voltage to ground and it will explode. So, and as we know though, I like explosions. So have a great day and I uh, hope you enjoyed this training video.